Hey guys, it's Rachel with Be Heal Dog Training, and I'm going to be talking you through this session here with Jordy, where we were working on uh, leash handling skills. This was our very first session working together, so I'm fitting him with a prong collar for the very, very first time, and now I'm going to be introducing him to it. So this is a very gentle process. You are going to see him resist some. That's pretty typical. A lot of dogs will resist the uh, feeling of the prong collar at first because they're kind of like, hey, what is this? It feels different to them doesn't mean that it's painful or uncomfortable, it's just a, an odd kind of sensation. So some dogs get wigged out by that, just like some dogs get wigged out by the sensation of a slip lead for the first time or any sort of, any collar at all. Um, so all I do there is just quietly continue to add some pressure and then release that pressure as he gives to it. Now you see me pick up the bonker here too, and the reason I do that is because he has a tendency to mouth things. Uh, his owners told me that he has a tendency to put his mouth on them sometimes, not in an aggressive way, but just in kind of a pushy way. And so I'm anticipating that he's probably going to do that on the leash as well. And a bonker is a great way to stop that. I don't like to pop the leash through their mouth if they're biting on the leash, but a bonker or a remote collar stem, we weren't working with a remote collar yet at this point, but a remote collar stem is good for that as well. Um, a pet convincer works great, and that's just a little, um, almost like an air gun, little compressor that you shoot out air, makes a loud noise, and startles the dog. But anyway, what I'm doing here, so I did my little intro to the prong collar. As you saw, it's very, very brief, where I just added a little bit of pressure and I had him yield to it. Now what I'm doing are these 180s. Lots and lots and lots of direction changes. And I have gotten to where I like to start off all dogs doing this right off the bat. So I'm kind of indirectly teaching a heel at this point. And what I mean by that is I'm not actually putting him in the heel position physically. I'm not using a whole ton of guidance to put him in exactly the right spot. Um, I will do more of that later, but especially with a dog like him, he was so distracted and so kind of all over the place to begin with. Um, that and you don't see a lot of that in this video but beforehand when i was working with him just on a slip lead very very distracted excitable dog so what i like to do here with these 180s is i keep changing direction because it keeps him paying attention to me and what i do is i allow him you can really see it there in that last one i allow him to hit the end of that leash but i'm not yanking the leash i'm not jerking the leash i am just suddenly changing directions knowing that he is most likely going to hit the end of that leash himself. But the point being, I want it to be more of a, whoops, I suddenly changed directions and you weren't paying attention. And basically I want him to turn around and go, whoa, how'd you get way over there? When did that happen? And then the dog starts to check in. So you see that starting to happen here, these last couple of passes as I've gone by, he's paying more attention. He's not really hitting the end of the leash so much as kind of pausing, turning and going, oh, maybe I should follow along with you. So doing those 180s is a really great way to get a dog to check in and start paying attention. And then what I start doing, and you can see here, I've shortened up the leash a little bit. Now I'm gonna start guiding him a little bit more into an actual heel position. Now at this being our very first session, I'm not gonna be incredibly picky about it, but I do want him to walk slightly behind me. I want him to basically be matching my pace. And anytime he moves out of that heel position, I'm gonna use a slight popping motion to guide him back into place. Um, I don't want to pull and pull him into place. I wanna use a popping motion. And when I say popping, it doesn't even necessarily mean a hard pop, but it's more of a quick pop and release on the leash that gives him information that he then responds to. And this is how I do it with every dog that I work with. So um, I would rather do a series of little tiny flicks of my wrist and little pops and right there was the bonker for biting the, the leash. Okay, I know it's probably kind of hard to see because he's in the shadows and far away. Um, and I know the sound in that video is not turned on, but all I do is he goes to bite the leash, it's a calm no, throw the bonker at him, and then we move on and it's no big deal. A little bit of resistance on the leash there, I just add a little bit of pressure and he's like, oh, okay, I'll come along with you. Um, so anyway, we uh, started with the 180s, now I'm doing more of a uh, guiding him in place, flicking of the wrist anytime he moves outside of kind of this little bubble that I picture him being in. So you wanna picture this little bubble that the dog is in and anytime they move out of that place, you give a little flick of the wrist. So if the dog 
is too far forward, you're gonna flick straight back on your leash. You wanna make sure you don't pull up. A lot of people who've never used a prong collar before um, tend to pull straight up when they're first working on this. If the dog is getting ahead, you want to pull back and basically be parallel with the dog's back. Um, if the dog's lagging behind, you pop forward a bit. If the dog is moving off to the right, then you pop to the left. You see what I mean? Um, and the reason I have two leashes on there, I didn't think to mention that earlier. So the slip lead is on there as a backup. I'm not actually using that leash. You can see that it's just loose there. So um, typically what I do is I will um, have my prong collar carabinered to a flat buckle collar as a backup because prong collars can possibly come apart when you're using them. A good quality prong collar, uh, like the Herm Springer, which is what I use and recommend for everybody, it rarely happens. It's just a possibility. And so anytime I'm in an area that's not fenced off or enclosed, I have a backup just because you never know. Um, if I happen to put that on, you know, the prong collar on incorrectly, I'm not above making a mistake. Um, you, you know, it's possible that that would come off. So that is all that that slip lead is there for is that if that prong collar were to pop off, I've got that slip lead. Um, now look at the engagement here. Look at how much he's paying attention to me. That is because I have made myself relevant to him. Lots of changing directions and then also I've been changing my speed back and forth here. If you notice that, walking faster and slower, doing things that catches attention. And now he's giving me eye contact without me having to ask for it. I reward it, I love it, but I don't have to ask for it. So anyway, that's it. That's his first session. It's really brief. Um, that was, what, less than seven minutes that we worked together. Um, and so it's not a whole long drawn out process. I don't need it to be, I don't want it to be. Just a quick little intro and then the next time we'll be able to start kind of in the same place of picturing my little bubble and um, just kind of sharpening everything up from there.